In this episode, we're going to learn some very interesting, very fun calculator and conversion tricks. This is a really handy tool to, to know. And like the last lesson, there are a lot of patterns I want to show you. And it's best shown through examples. Generally, the pattern here is from units to units, I do the query, number units in secondary units. So for example, four miles in meters. Let me show you this. An easy conversion example would be 212F in C. That is 212 degrees Fahrenheit in C. Now, if you know about the Fahrenheit scale, you know that's a magic number. Let's do that example. 212F in C. And you can see here, 212 degrees Fahrenheit is 100 Celsius. Now, notice that we've got these little widgets we can use here. I can actually change it to Kelvin, if you're a chemist, or change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I can switch those, whatever I'd like to do. More importantly, I can change these numbers. So now, what's, say, 32 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? It's 89.6. It's a little warm. Or if you want to do something like this, 98.6, the normal temperature of a human body, you can see that in Celsius it's 37. Okay, handy thing to know if you're in Europe and you've got the wrong kind of thermometer or the right kind of thermometer, depending. You can also change length measurements. So the first one was temperature measurements. We can do length measurements. We can do volume measurements. We do all kinds of different units. So 400 yards in miles. Handy if you're swimming 400 laps, 400 yards in, in your swimming pool, you want to convert it to miles. But most people want to actually convert that to, say, kilometers. So you click here, and it can combine that's 0.36 kilometers. Or you can change the query itself. 400 yards in km. You can do it either way. You can either do the query directly in the query line in the Google query space, or you can alter it here. So let's say today I didn't do 400, I did say 600, 0.5 kilometers. We can obviously do 32 C and F. We can also do volume measurements, which are a little bit more complicated, especially with the English system like we have in the United States. Because truthfully, I can never remember what is a bushel. 32 bushels in quarts It's 1,191 quarts. OK, that's not particularly useful for you in the rest of the world. So what's that in liters? 1,127 liters. You get the idea. These are really handy for these very obscure. So for example, 32 bushels in gallons, or say, barrels. You see? Basically, you're following the pattern number units in secondary units. That is, the ones you want it to be converted into. Really handy for measurements you don't use a lot. For example, 2 inches in angstroms. Now, an angstrom is a very tiny unit, usually used around here for measuring the distance on silicon chips. So we use it a lot in Silicon Valley, but it's not a measure that you might commonly see. So it's a little bit easy to explore with this. Now, notice that if you do a crazy conversion, like centimeters into milliliters, that is length into volume, it won't tell you. It will just kind of give you weird results. 23 centimeters in milliliters. Um, now, notice here that we're not actually giving you a Google result. Instead, what you're giving are pages that mention both milliliters and centimeters. So there might be some conversion pages and web pages that have both measures on it. But it's not a conversion, because that would be crazy talk. But this is really handy for understanding things about your world that you might not have thought about. For example, you might have read the book by Jules Verne called 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, right? But what is 20,000 leagues, really? It's do it in kilometers. 111,000 kilometers. That's not the depth the submarine went to, because think about it. What's the diameter of the Earth? So using that same trick we saw before of asking simple questions like diameter of the Earth or whatever, we can get and see that that's crazy. 111, it's just not the depth of the submarine, obviously. So you see the idea. You can ask these simple questions like we learned in the last lesson, or use the unit conversions, as we see here, to convert from miles to kilometers or vice versa. We can also do simple calculations like this, 1 plus 2. Unsurprisingly, it gives you 3. But what's more is we now have a calculator here. So now we can do whatever divided by 2 equals whatever. And now you have this whole 
calculator here, including the trig functions over here. So cosine of, say, 4, 5. You get the idea. Handy trick to know. Just by typing a calculation into Google, you can do fairly complex math, including things you might not have thought about. So let's, for example, do y equals sine of x, like that. And it will graph that function for you, which is really nice especially when you start to get into more complex functions. So we're, in this case, showing you two graphs plotted on top of each other. The first one, y equals sine x, comma, second one, y equals cosine of x. And you can see them in blue and red, respectively. This works for even more complex questions like y equal cosine x plus cosine of y. What will that give us? What it does is it gives us a 3D plot because we're asking for this equation with three variables, x, y, and z. And we get this beautiful sort of oscillating up and down o over the zero plane. You see what I'm saying? There's lots of stuff in here that you can explore, including a few things you might not have thought about. Here's that thing called the Easter egg. Number of horns on a unicorn is one. That doesn't surprise me, right? But what you can do, just for fun, is add in the loneliest number. There we go, loneliest number. And one plus one is two. It's just a fun thing. But I think you get the idea. The point of a lot of these calculator functions is the ability to do your math very, very quickly without having to, to go back and forth between your regular off-board calculator and the thing you want to look at online. When you're ready, go ahead and continue on to the next activity by clicking on the button below.